What's up, Pirate Nation? I'm your host, David Hyman. Welcome to a brand new episode of Hall Talk. We have a great show for you tonight. We're going to dive right back into our fall sports here at Seton Hall, as well as give you exclusive content on Wednesday's Big East Media Day. I'll be joined by my panel in just a second to break it all down for you. This is Hall Talk. This team needs to show me something for me to believe that they're going to make a run in the tournament. I think they can have a chance of going over 35 wins without a problem. Just stepping up from the four points to the 17, she's just dropping threes like there's no tomorrow. But chemistry is an underrated key in college basketball. That, that was by far the best game I've seen them play. This is Hall Talk, and that's how the chalk talks. Welcome back, and before we jump into Big East Media Day, we've got some news around campus for all our fall sports. The men's soccer team continues to fall deeper and deeper into the standings, currently at 0-10-1. Their most recent loss came Wednesday at the hands of DePaul, 3-2 in overtime. The men will travel to take on Providence on Saturday. The women aren't doing much better, currently sitting at 2-10-2. The Pirates will look to break a three-game losing streak on Sunday when they take on Butler. Volleyball is continuing their win-loss trend, now at 10-10 on the season. They are currently in sixth place in the Big East. And at this time, I'd like to bring in my panel for this evening, John Fanta and Kevin Hubler. Guys, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Dave. It's good to be here. It is awesome to be back here, Dave. What a fun show we've got planned. Hoops is back. Yes. Now, both of you guys were at Big East Media Day on Wednesday. Just tell me how that was. What caught your eye at, at Madison Square Garden, the mecca of basketball? Guys, what happened on Wednesday? You know, Dave, when I was there, it seemed like the resounding uh, feeling among players and coaches was the biggest thing that was emphasized was the rules. There's a lot of new rules between the 30-second shot clock for the men's, 10-minute mm -hmm. quarters for the women's, and also they're emphasizing more the hand check penalties on the outside around the perimeter. And I think the biggest thing is that everybody thinks that these are good changes for the game. I think when you looked at, talked to players, they thought there was going to be a difficult uh, transition over to the foul issues. And when you mm -hmm. talked to a couple coaches, they said, yeah, that's really actually been the issue because they brought in officials into the uh, practices and scrimmages. And Coach McDermott at Creighton told me that he had 24 fouls called on teams in 15-minute scrimmages. So. Right, and Coach Willard said the team's been practicing with a 24-second shot clock the other day just to get the team ready. I mean, it speeds up the game. John? Outstanding guard play. Back here at Seton Hall, Dave, you would think that on paper, Isaiah Whitehead and Kadeen Carrington, yep. that would be one of the best backcourt duos in the Big East. Well, it could be, but they've got so much competition because you start with Villanova, and Ryan Archdiakono has newcomer Jalen Brunson, who enters in. And then you go to Georgetown, Devonta Smith-Rivera, need I say more? You go to Butler, Callan Dunham, Roosevelt Jones, and then Providence, the best player in the country, yeah. potentially, in Chris Dunn. Mm -hmm. Xavier has some question marks, but you go along the lines. I just named four teams that are all NCAA tournament contenders that you could say are better than Whitehead and Carrington, at least on paper going into this year. This conference is deep. They had a great year last year, and it's displayed in the preseason coaches poll. Two teams ranked in Villanova and Butler, 9th and 22nd, and four teams receiving votes. That's yeah. six teams total that you can have NCAA tournament arguments for. This conference is deep. And how do you have success in college basketball? With great guard play. The Pirates have a very good backcourt duo. They have a ton of competition. Well, at one point last year, weren't there like five, six teams ranked in the top 25 in the Big East? Hopefully this year that trend can continue. And guard play, like you said, uh, John Rothstein from CBS Sports last month just made it official that Isaiah Whitehead is going to be bringing the ball up court for the Pirates this season. Well, so we'll see. That's a transition for him, yeah. but I think it goes back to the fact you just brought it up about how deep this conference is. In college basketball, how do you win? How do you make your way up the rankings? How did Seton Hall do it last year? They beat St. John's at Villanova exactly. because Sterling Gibbs, Jaron Cena, and Isaiah Whitehead were, uh, excuse me, Kadeen Carrington were flawless. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily always need the big man. You've got to be able to have the three-point shooters. You've got to be able to do it all in the backcourt, and Whitehead and Carrington have to do it themselves. I know we'll get to it shortly. A lot happened that Big East Media Day. I can just tell from what you guys are telling me right now. Let's play a little game. Fact or fiction, and we're going to make it Seton Hall style, what you guys are looking forward to the upcoming season. Maybe you can answer some questions for me. Number one, Isaiah Whitehead. I know we just touched base on him a little bit. Isaiah Whitehead will be all Big East first team. Fact or fiction? Kevin, I'll start with you. I think that's going to be fiction, Dave. I mean, when you look at his numbers last season, yes, he was hurt. But, I mean, he had 12 points a game, but he also averaged three turnovers a game. I don't think those are numbers you want out of a first team guard in the Big East. And when you look at the Big East guards in this conference, 
A lot of them, they don't turn the ball over. They're very sound with the ball. They understand that there's a physical uh, conference. And they understand how to handle that physicality well. John? Fiction, because he hasn't learned defense yet in right. the Big East. He's just not good enough right now on the defensive end of the floor. He knows how to score the basketball extremely well, David. I also think that if it were to be a fact, that may not be a good thing for Seton Hall. Why? Because that means he's doing it all himself. And I'm afraid that it is all in his hands to a point where he might have to do it himself. Sometimes you don't want 18 points per game. Sometimes you want two guys to have 12 and then somebody to pitch in 10. You need some balance here. And Seton Hall, that's a huge question for them. I still say fiction, though. Defensively, not there. All right, next, Angel Delgado. And we guys remember the season he had, the freshman campaign uh, for us last year. Angel Delgado will be a top three big man in the Big East. John? I say absolute fact. In right. fact, I think, and I'll call it right now, he's the best big man in the Big East. Wow. He's an absolute eater down low. And I know that you've got something to come for me, but Angel <laughs> Delgado was absolutely fantastic last year. A number of double-doubles. He led the conference in double-doubles in Big East play. Kid was eating down low. He's got to learn how to defend better. He's got to learn how to not get into foul trouble. That's huge. Last year he got into plenty of it. But Angel Delgado has only improved. Playing for the Dominican Republic in the Pan Am Games helped him as well. Fact, best big man in the Big East. Not a top three best. Yeah, but right. Joe, when you look at it, you look at the other players in this league, and you look at the fact that Delgado is losing Brandon Mott. He's going to be the target of the opposing team's offenses. He's only 6'9". He is not built to be a center. Yes, he added 15 pounds of muscle this season but that doesn't mean that he is going to be a big man in this league. You look at guys like Daniel Chepu at Villanova, okay. Luke Fisher at Marquette, okay. and you also look at Roosevelt Jones. I know you said he's Who's six foot four. He's, he's listed six. Angel six. Delgado, plays, six foot nine. He plays like a big man, though. And yes, Delgado played like a big man last year, but Roosevelt Jones has guys to back him up. So if I'm making a, a team right now, down on the block, you're going to put Roosevelt Jones over Angel Delgado? Because Delgado is playing as a center. Because Delgado is playing as a center when he's not a center in this league. Yes, because Delgado plays as a center. There's going to be guys taller than him, bigger than him. I don't think he can do it. Okay, he's got Brayden Anderson down low, the transfer from Fresno State, who they plan to play at the five. Mm -hmm. I completely disagree with you in that there's three guys that are better than him, three big men better than him. That was the question here, that he's a top three big man in the Big East. I say he is. What has Luke Fisher done? You brought up Luke Fisher's name. I think Henry Ellenson's better than him coming into the conference. I absolutely think that for Marquette. That's why they're a rising team. Oh, Shepu's good, but Villanova doesn't play down low. They're a three-point shooting team. Exactly. They don't get the ball down low to him. Oh, Shepu went off against Seton Hall, but we're looking at the whole season here. Well, when you look at Jay Wright, he's the Big East coach of the year. Yeah, right? they the shoot threes. Yes, but he has shown the ability that he is able to adapt his game plan, and I think that's what's going to happen this year. Yeah, Jay Wright's best dress. He's not the best coach <laughs> in the Big East. One more on the men's side before we hit the women's side. Kevin Willard, head coach Kevin Willard, he's on the hot seat this year for Seton Hall. I would go on the record and say, yeah, I think he's on the hot seat. When you look at everybody in the league, everybody in this that's behind this team, they're teams that don't, they're uh, fans that don't think Willard is, is fit for this job. Okay. And I think that when you look at it, the numbers that he's shown, 16 and 15 record last season overall, I don't think that uh, Pat Lyons, the AD here, is happy with that. I think if we don't see a lot of improvement this season, I think Willard's on the hot seat. John? There's no argument to it. It's known across the country. Kevin Willard has to win this year, fact. All right. We'll see if he can uh, cool that seat down a little bit early on in the season and maybe early on into Biggie's play like he did last year. At the end of the day, you have four games. If you don't get a, if you don't get a buy in the Big East tournament, you've got four games you've got to worry about in March. You can lose every other game, and if you win those four, you get in the big dance, Dave. So he's got to do it at the end of the season. I'm tired of watching it at the beginning. Definitely a tough stretch at the end of the season there. All right, on the women's side now, can Tabitha Richardson-Smith, or excuse me, will Tabitha Richardson-Smith average 20 points at least 20 points for the women's team. I say fact because you have to look at Tab and what she's coming into this year. She's got to do all the scoring for this team in the backcourt. Shakina Richardson accompanies her. I think it takes her time just fully become accustomed to be able to score. Richardson Smith will launch, I think, uh, almost double the shots that she took last year because she can. Dee Dee Simmons and Deja Simmons, obviously, were both averaging over 17 points per game last year. So you'd have to think, we're just asking Tab. Tony Vazella is just asking Tab of the Richardson Smith to get him one more basket per game. And she's going to get all those attempts from yep. Dee Dee and Deja Simmons. It's a fact. You know, I think that it's going to be a fiction because when you look at the way teams are going to look at how DePaul played Seton Hall in that championship game last yeah. season. They shut down Tab of the Richardson Smith. They face guard her. I think she's going to have numbers in the assist column more this year. I don't think she's going to have the points she had. I don't think she gets a 20 a game this year. She doesn't pass the basketball. 
if she gets the ball, she's not going to be able to score. They're going to be double teaming her. They're going to be triple teaming her. I don't think that's going to open up opportunities for everybody else to get that area. Everybody else is going to be scoring for Seton Hall. Real quick, guys. Please women's speak. basketball is a Big East title contender this year. Oh, with that blazer on the sidelines, you bet <laughs> they right. are. They're never not a Big East title contender. It's an absolute fact. Tony Vazella will keep this team in the Big East race. They are a contender. They're a top four team in the league because of the way they play, David. They play fast. It's a fact. Kevin? I think it's going to be fact also, Dave. I mean, when you look at Tony Bazell on the sideline, these players love to play for him. When you have a coach that's behind you the way that these players have a coach and Tony Bazell behind them, they want to play, they want to win, and that fuels the fire even more. I might post up Kevin, though, because he doesn't get – Angel Delgado is the best big man in the Big East. <laughs> We all, right. all night. Well, basketball season is just rapidly approaching. We're having some fun here. Guys, thanks for joining me. For John Fanta and Kevin Hubler, I'm David Heim. Have a great night, everyone.